Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So welcome, welcome everybody. We are continuing uh, autoimmunity, and uh, today, uh, in this lecture, actually, this lecture, we are going to talk about the second part. Like in uh, at the beginning, we said that uh, in uh, autoimmunity, uh, there we divided into three different part, and in this part, we are going to talk about autoimmune disease and pathogenic mechanism. We already discussed the making and breaking of cell tolerance. That is that was basically a summary of what we knew before with some new information like um, the AIRE kind of thing which was not discussed before, but mostly you knew and we summarize like these are the tolerance mechanism if it breaks then autoimmunity comes. But now, what in this lecture we are going to see what is happening in autoimmune disease, how different components are involved in doing this pathogenesis or doing cause the disease. Okay. Specific adaptive immune response to self antigen can cause autoimmune disease. Any immune response or adaptive immune response to our own protein or self antigen cause autoimmune disease. Here there is a difference in infection what happened in infection if any infectious organism enters into our body, our immune system work on it and remove it. Okay, whether the toxin or virus or bacteria, eventually we are cured, we will be cured by uh, help of immune system, but that means no antigen will be there anymore, okay, that will be removed. But in case of autoimmune system, the problem is antigen is always there. Okay. In foreign pathogen, as long as antigen is there, immune system is activated or upregulated, and as soon as it is gone, it is gradually go down and remain in a very basal level like the in memory cell, memory B and T. We will not see the high active immune system against that antigen, but in autoimmunity, antigen is always there, and that is the problem. Immune system is always active, and unfortunately, there is no medicine because if we block the immune system by any medicine our immunity will be go down. So, we will be prone to many diseases. Okay. So, generally I mean it is very I mean lot of every possible attempt are made like to uh, get rid of the short immune disease people are still trying just to discover for that what I have to know we have to know the immune system much more detail we have to study more detail at molecular level what exactly happening. So, that specifically we can block something so that that disease can be slowed down or gone, but the thing is immune system are so interconnected if you block one thing many other thing will be blocked. So, that is one problem. Okay. Autoimmunity can be classified in two ways it may be organ specific or may be systematic organ specific means organ specific means type 1 diabetes mellitus because it happened in uh, uh, pancreas only. So, all these things like Graves disease, Hashimoto, this is these do are thyroid related, myasthenia gravis is uh, nerve cell related. So, that means specific organ, specific organs are affected by the autoimmunity, but if it is systematic that means if it is spreaded all over the body, it is not a specific place or site of the body then it is called systematic autoimmune disease like rheumatoid arthritis okay, that happen in all the joint and pain. Okay. Systemic lupus erythematosus which is in short called SLE which is not uh, that uncommon. Okay. Then Sjogren's symptoms, so these are common or it is spreaded all over the body you can see why I will not tell every detail of all the disease at least for example, I will tell you some. So, these disease are all over the body that is why it is called systematic. Okay. Multiple components are responsible like for any disease 
multiple what are the components of immune system Com major component of immune system is the T cell okay, and B cell. B cell directly is not involved what part of the B cell? B cell produce antibody that is responsible for uh, the autoimmune disease. Okay. So, what happened? So, suppose this is a disease uh, called myasthenia gravis, I will tell you what is that. For the timing you just say that myasthenia gravis is a disease, autoimmune disease. So, if you take blood from this patient, what will be there? There are I mean immune cell will be T cell different T cells will be there like T 1, T H 2, T 17, T like all will be there and there will be some antibody. Okay. So, if you take this T cell separated from this patient's blood and you have some antigen presenting cell suppose you have a um, macrophage culture which is expressing this receptor. What is the receptor? Acetylcholine receptor. Okay. Acetylcholine receptor is the target for this disease. You acetylcholine receptor what it is doing I will show you later and many of you know also it is transmit the um, neural signal right acetylcholine release and it binds to the receptor and in through synapse it goes to the next nerve uh, neuron and then next to next and that is how the signal goes from one into another end of the nervous system. So, what happened the receptor find this acetylcholine uh, uh, T cell receptor finds acetylcholine receptor as a target. So, it will bind. So, T cell isolated from this patient it is found that it binds to acetylcholine receptor. Not only that the antibody also interacting with the acetylcholine receptor. So, these two thing is proving that acetylcholine receptor is the target. Okay. And this acetylcholine receptor and uh, human acetylcholine receptor and mouse acetylcholine receptor are many places they are similar in sequence. Okay. They are not identical, but their similarity is very much. Okay. So, what happened same antibody which is raised again human ac uh, acetylcholine receptor can also act with uh, mouse acetylcholine receptor. So, it was also found that if you isolate the antibody from this myasthenia gravis patient and inject into mouse the ma uh, then the that particular mouse also get uh, are showing the symptoms of the myasthenia gravis. That means, what this experiment or this um, experiment or interaction between this is telling. It is telling that this particular disease just example many other disease you can have like this both T cell as well as B cell is responsible. So, I can I mean if you see the title of this slide the multiple components of the immune system are typically involved in autoimmune disease. This is just one example many autoimmune disease you can have and can see the similar example and in this lecture or in autoimmunity we are not going to discuss all the disease whichever is easy and easy to explain easy to understand I will try to explain that. Okay. Another one is multiple components of immune system typically recruited in autoimmune disease is that if you see that EAE that is encephalomyelitis is the short form EAE. What happened mice injected with myelin basic protein. So, what you can induce this disease this is a myelin protein okay. uh, if you inject with the adjuvant adjuvant is I will discuss for the timing I am not going to spend time on this adjuvant is normally induce the immune system much more way when we will discuss vaccine maybe um, uh, next uh, week you will listen that. So, when we will discuss vaccine how to develop vaccine we will discuss uh, adjuvant what happen you take the myelin protein of mice mix with adjuvant and inject in too much what will happen even if it is a self antigen it will act as a foreign antigen. Okay, so, that particular mice will develop the autoimmune disease and ultimately it will be paralyzed. Okay, what was shown that T17 and TH1 are responsible for that. So, if you inject this develop the disease purify the T1 by again that flow cytometer with the fluorescence activated cell sorter. If you isolate the T cell and inject a fresh mouse that itself can cause the disease. That means, T cell 
is enough both uh, is cause this disease of uh, autoimmune encephalomyelitis. Okay. So, this means both varieties of T cell T H 1, T 7, T in T uh, C D 4 that follicular um, helper cells and uh, antibody everything is responsible for autoimmune disease. And next one I will just show you the picture how it looks. Say this is a normal mouse and if the disease becomes they become paralyzed you see their leg they I mean their muscle cannot work because their nervous system is uh, nerve transmission or neural transmission is have a part that is why they become paralyzed. So, multiple component these are the table I should told you just two, but here there are table like myasthenia gravis acetylcholine receptor is a um, or autoantibody is generated and these Graves disease and all other uh, like lupus rash there are many other diseases where antibody is responsible and these antibody can cause temporary disorder like multiple I mean uh, what kind of say suppose mother having autoimmune disease. Okay. In this case it is a thyroid it is called Graves disease I will tell you what is Graves disease I mean in this lecture only. So, mother with Graves disease have autoantibody in the previous slide also you see uh, Graves disease is autoantibody against what against thyroid stimulating hormone receptor okay, TSH receptor. So, antibody against TSH receptor. Okay. So, if mother has the autoimmune disease of this Graves disease that means anti TSHR antibody what will happen this antibody will go to baby. Okay. So, when baby is inside mother's womb baby will show the disease because the same antibody is going to react with the TSHR of that growing baby, uh, fetus. Just immediately after birth also that baby will also show the disease because some antibody will still left and you know every antibody has a half life and this is mostly IgG. So, IgG half life is say 30 days. So, that individual will show the symptoms of this disease about 30 days clear. I am assuming that I mean I do not uh, remember exactly what is half life most likely 30 days. So, if it is 30 days so this 30 days that baby will have Mm, the symptom of this disease, but eventually when the existing antibody will go away that baby is normal there is no autoimmune symptoms. So, the baby will normal. So, existing so if any this can happen suppose any Graves disease individual have a, any individual having Graves disease they are the uh, blood donor if if you if if I take blood for for any reason from a person who is, who is having Graves disease that blood will contain the antibody and as long as that antibody will be there in my body not only in this case this is regular, but in the blood donation also uh, autoimmune disease individual donate blood that is recipient also will show the symptom for certain days okay, as long as that antibody remain in the system. Okay. So, these are the list. I am not going and spending time this is the different disease where T cell is responsible, B cell is responsible, antibody is responsible. Okay. B cell means B cell and antibody what is the difference because when a B cell is activated and reduce uh, produce antibody that is the cause, but B cell also antigen presenting cells. So, sometimes B cell act as the antigen presenting cells also in the autoimmune disease. So, both T cell, B cell and antibody all are responsible. That is why we said in the top that multiple components of the immune system are typically recruited in autoimmune disease. Chronic autoimmune disease develops through positive feedback from inflammation, inability to clear self antigen and a broadening autoimmune response. What is happening? Let us see the example. Suppose normally what happen in skin, skin tissue okay, that or in any tissue the B cell do not see the antigen because it is inside internal antigen is not exposed to all our internal proteins that resides always inside the cell B cell is not going to see them. But if it breaks some damage tissue damage happen the antigen come out 
B cell can interact or B cell receptor can interact that can present this through MHC 2 activate the T cell that T cell itself will activate again the B cell and convert to plasma cell. Okay. That plasma cell will produce lot of antibody what will happen that antibody will go and try to infect more cells. Okay. So, more tissue injury more tissue injury means more macrophage more neutrophils. So, a continuous inflammation. So, it start with a single cell it was not there. So, only tissue damage caused this initiation of this disease and it was start with a very small uh, region or a single cell and gradually it will spread all over the region and cause a serious inflammation or a continuous inflammation of the disease. That is also a, uh, one way that autoimmune disease can happen. So, compartmentalization of the antigen or self antigen is also very important. So, our immune system do not see most of the protein normally because they do not stay in blood neither they are in the lymph node or the spleen. Okay. So, this is another very do not see do not it is not a very complicated slide it looks very complicated, but it is very straightforward and simple. How? See in suppose one cell damage happen not only the antigen or the protein will come up the nuclear protein or nuclear material will also come and nuclear material and cellular material what is there they are our ribosome which has RNA and protein they are our nucleosome which has lot of histone histone 1 histone 2 and DNA right. So, what happened so suppose there are 4 B cell okay, there are 4 B cell and these B cell receptor can recognize H 1 that means histone 1 this B cell is ribosome specific this B cell is histone 2 specific there are histone 1 histone 2 a 2 b 3 4 right 2 b specific and this is DNA specific. Okay, 4 B cell are 4 different uh, antigen specific, but this T cell this T cell can activate almost all of them because this particular B cell um, uh, that MHC 2 will put H 1 B this will put H 1 B because whole complex we are going to be internalized. Okay. This whole complex which contain H 1 H 2 B H 2 A H 3 B RNA protein everything is going to. So, whole complex of DNA are going to internalize everything will be processed and each one will be displayed. Okay. So, this T cell, but this B I mean this will be uh, this receptor is H 1 B specific, but when it is interact this suppose this red bacteria like thing is the H 1. Okay. It interact with that, but whole complex will go inside processed and displayed same way if it is taking ribosome all protein and RNA will be taken up here this particular DNA uh, B cell is recognizing DNA, but whole complex is going. So, if 50 proteins are getting inside all will be processed and displayed but the receptor is single type. Okay. So, each one may be different, but this T cell I mean each one can activate the one T cell like H 1 peptide specific these two both can activate the H 1 type T cell right. So, one T cell can activate multiple B cell why this thing happening because the antigen is a mixture of many things. Okay, it is a complex protein just same way one B cell after eating this whole complex can activate multiple T cell because here they are activating H 1 here they are activating H 2 okay. because each the suppose there are 4 different proteins after processing all will be chopped. So, in one MHC 2 there will be H 1 another MHC 2 there will be H 2 another MHC 2 H 3 some M, uh, uh, MHC 2 some other part of the protein. Okay. So, all will be exposed in different way and therefore, one B cell can present the antigen to multiple T cell. So, this is a very complex situation and this happen in SLE systemic erythromatosis lupus, okay. but this is common 
but in that case there are a lot of symptoms are there for uh, this disease, but it, it is not happen very easily because how the cell will rupture and then all this um, uh, nuclear material will come and uh, displayed in the uh, peripheral blood or system the ribosome. So, this is possible, but this is not very common not very common means this is not very e happen easily, but it is not that rare also. Both antibody and effector T cells can cause tissue damage in autoimmune disease. Both antibody and effector T cell can cause tissue damage in autoimmune disease. Okay. So, here is a list of disease, this is autoantigen what is actually caused I mean reacting with the immune system and this is the consequence what is happening. Okay. This is I am just showing that there are many. Okay. So, some are bacterial I mean some will come and show you here is this again then there are T cell mediated like type 1 diabetes is T cell mediated we are going to explain that okay, what is happening. So, this was a list I did not go for de de detail now we are going to see what is happening auto antibody against blood cell what will happen or antibody binding in blood cell activate the complement action you now know the detail about complement right what is going to happen say this is RBC okay, this is flat I mean this is sidewise antibody binds to it. So, if there is antibody against RBC what will happen as soon as antibody coat it it will act like optionization and whole RBC will be taken up by macrophage and destroy or same way if after binding antibody if complement binds to it because you know that complement that is how the name came. Okay. What will happen RBC lysis will happen complement mediated lysis that is also the effective function of antibody. So, this is opsonization and this is complement mediated lysis in both the case what will happen the number of RBC will be going down very drastically as a result a severe anemia right. So, this is possible. So, if any antibody against RBC this can happen. So, now I will show you few examples. The fixation of sublytic doses of complement to cells that we already uh, say, say that also can cause inflammatory response. Okay, this complement interaction there are many part after complement processing there are small part you know that 3A, 3B. So, that small part 3A, 4A, 5A these also give the inflammatory response in complement. So, when complement mediated action is happening, so some inflammatory response is also happening at the same time. Okay. Antibody against receptor that we are discussing the Graves disease, the receptor against um, thyroid stimulating hormone and the receptor against the acetylcholine. Now, I will uh, discuss like how this happening. So, antibody against receptor also cause the disease and this is very common. Okay. What happened? You have to go back to your uh, school level as well as those who have biology in higher secondary if you remember, but what happened? We always have a thyroid hormone is very uh, important hormone for our system all the hormones are important but thyroid is one of the very important hormone too. So, what happened thyroid hormone is secreted by thyroid gland who is controlling that it is controlled by pituitary right. So, pituitary gland is releasing T S H pituitary gland is releasing T S H thyroid stimulating hormone that binds to the receptor present in thyroid gland or thyroid follicle. So, when we need thyroid hormone that means, suppose there is uh, supposed to be a level should be maintained okay. as soon as it goes below we need thyroid because that level should be maintained. So, as soon as it goes below signal goes to pituitary, pituitary release T S H it binds to thyroid hormone gland and thyroid released. Okay. So, when we need thyroid hormone pituitary do something what it is doing it is producing T S H bind to 
its receptor and thyroid hormone is released. Okay. So, it is releasing I mean it is producing thyroid hormone. So, as soon as it reach the level if it continues it will go up right. So, that is also not wanted I mean any I mean the level should be maintained if it is below it is problem it is above then also it is a problem right. So, you know goiter will happen. So, that means how it is controlled as soon as it reach the level it gives a negative feedback it tells pituitary well we are fine we do not need any more TSH. So, as soon as TSH stop this binding will not be there. So, no more thyroid hormone that is how it is regulated. So, when it is down pituitary release TSH it binds to thyroid hormone gland and release thyroxine or thyroid hormone and then as soon as it reaches the level it again giving a negative feedback to pituitary and pituitary stop TSH as soon as TSH is not there no more hormone secretion is also there that is the regular function. What happened in autoimmune disease that is the Graves disease antibody is developed against this receptor. Okay. What is going to happen? Antibody binding or the ligand binding the TSH binding receptor will not understand what is happening it will see that something binds to me. As soon as it antibody binds it will realize that TSH came and bind. So, it starts synthesizing thyroxine or thyroid hormone okay. that thyroid hormone production will give the negative feedback to pituitary pituitary stops producing TSH, but antibody is not controlled by that what will happen antibody is continuously remain attached to it and thyroid gland is continuously produce the thyroid hormone. So, what will happen hyperthyroidism. So, that individual will have lot of thyroid hormone because that regulation by TSH and pituitary is gone now antibody is continuously produced and give this problem this is Graves disease this is also autoimmune disease I hope you understand this. Similarly, myasthenia gravis this is a disease which is antibody against acetylcholine receptor. Normal case what happened this is the nerve end okay. these vesicles are full of acetylcholine whenever some impulse is coming what happened this neural impulse this acetylcholine is released all these dots. So, this acetylcholine is going to bind with this receptor okay, and give the signal to next nerve or the end that is what is called. So, when there is no acetylcholine here muscle is relaxed when muscle contraction is there whether it is a voluntary or non voluntary we need acetylcholine what is going to happen this muscle contraction will happen, but this is normal case this is a normal neuromuscular junction this is muscle this is nerve end. So, finally, motor nerve come and give the signal and muscle get relaxed or contract depending on whether acetylcholine is releasing or not releasing this is normal biology normal individual is going to do that, but in autoimmune disease what happened recept I mean again the antibodies developed against this receptor okay. what is the result the result is in even there is no acetylcholine release no impulse from brain this antibody is going to bind and cross link as soon as antibody is going to bind this will be internalized by receptor mediated endocytosis okay. and as a result what will happen you know that everything will be degraded that is normal process because cell will not understand whether it what happened because normally receptor mediated endocytosis does not happen if single like if single molecule attached to it, but if you see this this is a cross link that means one antibody cross link two receptors when this thing happened cell did not realize that is the bi normal binding as soon as cross linking happened endocytosis will happen and this endocytosis will 
reduce the number of acetylcholine receptor here. So, as a result all what will happen? Suppose, this nerve end is perfectly all right, it is loaded with acetylcholine vesicles okay. and nerve impulse come all this acetylcholine released, but in this place there is in this place there is no receptor what will happen? Muscle will not get the instruction for con to contract. So, if continuously that thing happen muscle cannot contract it will be completely relaxed for ever or as long as possible it is not coming. As a result what will happen? Again paralysis because your muscle I mean if I cannot do this contraction or relaxation then muscle will not work and as a result that particular part will be paralyzed. Okay. So, this is these are the two very unique example of antibody mediated autoimmune disease and definitely antibody there means definitely T cell is there, okay, T cell mediated activation is there. So, there are definitely antigen presenting cells are presenting this and which is activating T cells which is activating B cells. So, those part are common. So, if by any chance that regulation or this mistake happen we will see these kind of diseases. The two very nice example I mean there are some other, but we will restrict to this kind of like receptor uh, anti receptor antibody mediated autoimmune disease. Okay. So, we will discuss some more disease in next lecture okay. for till then thank you very much.